Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the commanding officer, Naval Air Station Whidbey Island, I would like to welcome you to today's ceremony. Will the guests please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and invocation. Captain, United States Navy, arriving. <laughs> Naval Air Station, Whitby Island, arriving. Navy Region, Northwest, arriving. Honor Guard, Parade the Colors. Aviation Electronics Technician, second class, Jahia Herrera from VAQ 140 will now sing our national anthem. Yeah. 
Honor Guard, retire the colors. Chaplain Uvilla will now offer the invocation. Something about your speech being an hour long. Well, I'll keep my prayer to a half hour. Is that right? I look forward to that FICA one of these days down in the Seattle area. And uh, you said that words matter. So I'm going to share a quote I think you heard roughly about three years ago again, because it's that meaningful, and then we will pray together. Sir, sirs, welcome, Master Chief, ma'am. I quote Eugene Peterson, the message, that'll come in a little while, how about this one? Skipper, you have taught us words matter, a quote you heard a few years ago from William Young's book, The Shack. If anything matters, then everything matters. Because you are important, everything you do is important. Every time you forgive, the universe changes. Every time you reach out and touch a heart or a life, the world changes. With every kindness and service, seen or unseen, my purposes are accomplished, and nothing will ever be the same again. Fellow sailors, your presence across the globe has marked our world for good, and nothing will ever be the same. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for Captain Arnie, his wife Samar, and their sons Aiden and Austin. Thank you for their 30 years of combined sacrifice and service to our country. We are grateful for Skipper Arnie and his kind and keen leadership over Naval Air Station Whidbey Island. Lord, thank you for you have changed our nation and our Navy for good as a result of their radical commitment. Further God, we welcome Captain Hanks and his family to Team Whidbey, for in a few minutes he will take leadership to Nasui. We place this service, these time-honored traditions, in your kind, loving arms. Amen. Side boys, dismissed. Guests, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf, behalf of Captain Arnie and Captain Hanks, I would like to welcome all of our distinguished guests, family, friends, and shipmates who are here to honor this special occasion. The change of command ceremony is a time-honored Navy tradition that represents a formal transfer of authority and responsibility for a unit from one commanding officer to another. The ceremony gives the outgoing commander, commanding officer a venue to address the officers and enlisted personnel one last time. And it provides the new commanding officer an opportunity to formally greet and provide transitional guidance to the crew. Today will be slightly different, as we will also use this gathering to recognize Captain Arnie's 30 years of dedicated naval service by conducting his retirement ceremony. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the Commanding Officer, Naval Air Station, Whidbey Island, Captain Matt Arney. All right, good morning. You find the speeches in here. Okay, great, good morning. For those guests who've joined us from afar, welcome to Team Whitby. It's truly an extraordinary day out here. For those joining us from across the installation and community, welcome to you who are Team Whitby. It's great to see so many people here today, especially given all that we have endured in the last eight months. That's gonna keep happening, don't worry about it. 
I'm especially proud and honored to celebrate today and to hand over an installation that is moving forward from COVID-19 into the many challenges that lie ahead. Gotta have fun, right? Choose to be happy. That's right. All right, so there are many people to thank you for this ceremony and reception that will follow. Uh, thanks to Pettis Herrera for that national anthem rendition. So, big round of applause. Also, for that color guard. So, that's the Wildcats of the Oak Harbor High School and JROTC. Really great outfit, uh, great kids out there. So, thanks to our color guard as well. <laughs> Side boys, bell ringer, honors bosun. We're gonna, we've got folks who are going to be doing the flag folding ceremony. Uh, we've got a lot of people involved in this ceremony in the execution of it to make this really look good and honor the tradition, so thank you all. Lieutenant Onis, our wedding planner, who spearheaded this event. So, very challenging. We started this a couple of months ago, planning for this, and of course as we emerged from COVID, things changed, and so did the, the vision. While well, the vision stayed the same, to bring as many people together as possible, to celebrate, but the directions within that changed along the way, and she reacted to that appropriately. So thank you very much to you and your team, which includes Raquel Stewart, our protocol officer, who has dealt with the challenges of the Navy Marine Corps internet in getting invitations out there and tracking those things. Funny, the Marine Corps left that whole partnership a long time ago. God bless them. And MCI, the slogan is, uh, we keep the bad guys out and keep the good guys from getting work done. So. And then Laura Matters, also a previous protocol, obviously had a big hand in helping us out to work through this as well. The working party, uh, just, like, just like the aircraft that go flying out here, those things don't go flying without maintainers and other people working behind the scenes. So a lot of sailors and civilians work in the working party from, uh, from in-house and NAVFAC, Holly Beecher and Skookum to make this whole thing happen to bring us together. So thank you all. Round of applause for everybody. Sound good? Does it sound good in back, by the way? All good? All right, great. Welcome. The dancing was superb. All right, we'll see if we can get a little more of that later. Speaking of which, welcome to Admiral Collins. So, thanks. So, Kaz, uh, Chief of Staff, ED, and uh, other folks from the region who came, Captain Miller, fellow CEOs, uh, Mike, Andrew, Rich from afar, thank you for joining us today from Kitsap, Everett, and NAVMAG. I appreciate it. I've enjoyed working with you and becoming friends, so thank you for everything you do for installation. Admiral Collins recently assumed command of our region, and I wish you all the best. I know you will do great things leading this region. Uh, with your experiences and your established priorities of serving the installations, the fleet, and our teammates. So, so thanks for being here. Oh, that's going to be annoying. All right. I also want to officially welcome Captain Eric Hanks and his family to Team Whitby. Welcome, Shanks. You have a great adventure ahead of you. Shanks, Renee, Lindsay, and Hunter. But we'll talk more about that adventure a little bit later. I won't, I won't get around from the podium to thank each person for joining us today. I will call out a few individuals who I've had the great pleasure to work with in this time. I'm going to take these off. Makes it easier to flip pages and, uh, wow, that is annoying. It, it was good yesterday. So, top fours, past and present, and their staff, and their wives, Needles, April, Boo, and Mindy. You guys are the reasons why we are here. All right. Look at that XO. <laughs> <laughs> huh. 
The magic touch. Thank you. So, Needles, April, Boo, and Mindy, you guys are the reasons why we are here. Not you guys as individuals, but the teams that you represent. To support operational squadrons to deploy around the world from ships and land bases. That's the reason why we are all here today and every day and night. And it takes every person working on this installation to make that happen. To keep the watch at places today, like at sea with USS Dwight D. Eisenhower. Misawa, Japan, Siganella, Sicily, Keflavik, Iceland, and Bahrain. That is what drives my team, a lot of them in back there, Mike, Jimbo, Mike, Eddie, Oli, Donnie, Melissa, Stevie P, Curtis, Pop, Sean, Sean, Ricardo, Party Boy, thanks for the flight Tuesday, and all of our sailors, chiefs, officers, and civilians in your teams. Doc Hewish and Doc Zeber, and certainly Doc Brandon, who at some point in 2019 decided to take over the collateral duty as public health emergency officer, what could happen? <laughs> Leadership of Team Whidbey, past and present. Mike Windham, Rabbit, thanks for the flight yes, uh, Wednesday and for having this great looking jet out here. Workle, Gladhands, Megatron, Farva, Woody, B-Dub, Chachi, Scott, Pat, Dustin, Busta, Oompa, who's on deployment. Buck, Wong, Coco, Deployed, Bubba, Pookie, Maggie, Mav, Cutter, Mongo, Feep, TMFJ, Greg, and many more. I just like to mix call signs and names. I think it's kind of fun. <laughs> Team Whidbey includes the many elected officials, leaders, and staff who we work with in our surrounding communities. Congressman Larson, mayors especially, Bob Severns, Molly Hughes, Lori Gear, County Commissioner Jill Johnson, Former Commissioner Helen Price Johnson, State Senators Ron Mazal, Keith Wagoner, Representative Dave Paul, City Council Member Joel Cervadius, Mayor Pro Tem Beth Munns, and her very handsome husband Larry, and the former NASWI CEOs. I miss our lunches, uh, but I always enjoy your perspectives. I'll finish up for now with those who have led within the triad with me. I've had the pleasure of working with five great leaders in my time here, two XOs, James Rankin and Tim Oz Oswald, who were certainly better than I was as an XO. Their leadership across Team Whitby and within my command has been extraordinary, allowing me to be out working with community issues, driving transformation where we can, and taking time off to enjoy this wonderful area with family. Three Command Master Chiefs, Shane Cardone is out there somewhere, uh, Donnie Leppert, who is now in uh, Japan serving under fellow War College graduate uh, General Chip Bierman, and Tom Gillen right here. These guys live and breathe leading sailors and are almost 9,000 active duty personnel and 11,000 total personnel across the base are better for their efforts. It has been great to work with you these last few months, CMC, and I wish you the best. So now our guest speaker, Sarah Rhodes. Thanks for coming, Sarah. She joins us today from the Seattle area where she has been working with, at Amazon for over a decade and currently leads Amazon Global Air as the vice president. She started her tenure at Amazon directing a distribution center after having contemplated continuing her naval service, which she did in the reserves and retired. She flew the Rhino as a combat pilot and instructor before we met at the Naval War College in Newport, Rhode Island. We met again recently when she was the presenter in a virtual meeting of the Naval Academy Alumni Association Puget Sound chapter. Thank you, Linda, for keeping that stuff going. I was struck by the way Sarah leads at Amazon and her principles that she conveys that have made her a successful leader in her organization and a model for leaders in the Navy to emulate. Please welcome Sarah Diamond Rhodes. I think I'll touch the microphone. All right, uh, well, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, it is certainly an honor and a privilege to be here this beautiful, yet somewhat foggy uh, Pacific Northwest morning. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First, thanks to Captain Arnie for perhaps making a non-traditional choice for a change of command and retirement speaker. Hopefully I won't disappoint. Being back on a Naval Air Station certainly brings back some wonderful memories 
And seeing some familiar faces today reinforces the saying, it's never goodbye, it's until we meet again. So it is great to meet again. Well, today marks the conclusion of an epic novel known as Flounder's Naval Career. His biography could be adapted to a choose-your-own-adventure book. A Naval Academy graduate, a Naval aviator who flew in Tomcats, Super Hornets, and a variety of other aircraft totaling over 3,000 hours, served aboard six different aircraft carriers, four still commissioned, fought in four major campaigns and combat operations, and commanded a Super Hornet squadron. When I think of Flounder's tactical command at tactical service, a quote by the father of the American Navy, John Paul Jones, comes to mind. I wish to have no connection with any ship that does not sail fast, for I intend to go into harm's way. In Flounder's case, ship could include aircraft, for he certainly went fast and straight into harm's way. In addition to his tactical experience, Flounder lived overseas to include Sweden, serving as the U.S. Naval Attaché prior to his final tour as a commanding officer of this outstanding base. Wow, one amazing opportunity after another. Well played, sir, well played. In every case, Flounder excelled at everything he did. There's a saying, jack of all trades, master of none. But in Flounder's case, he has been the master of all trades. I think of some references from two of my favorite books to describe perhaps how he has been so successful. In Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, The Story of Success, Gladwell states, achievement is talent plus preparation. And a compliment to that comes from Angela Duckworth's book, Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance, in which Duckworth states, without effort, your talent is nothing more than unmet potential. Without effort, your skill is nothing more than what you could have done but didn't. Captain Arnie's achievements and phenomenal career are not a function of luck or accident, but talent, preparation, effort, and skill. The change of command and retirement ceremony is such a time-honored tradition of the U.S. Navy. It is a very special event that, frankly, doesn't happen to this level of ceremony, decorum, recognition, celebration, honor, and defining moment in the civilian and corporate world. Sure, there may be a retirement party for someone completing years of work at the same company or marking the end of a formal career. Or if a leadership change for an organization takes place, it is usually marked by an email that goes out to a mass distribution email list, sometimes with a photo and short bio. However, there are typically no speakers, no band, no families, mentors, and fellow colleagues present. It is simply transactional. Today marks recognition and closure of a naval career well-led as well as a defining, visible, positive change of leadership command. An official shift of accountability from Captain Matt Arney to Captain Eric Hanks. Today is also just as much for those who are in the audience or even afar who are unable to attend in person. I would like to acknowledge you. You are the encouragement, the support, and perhaps the inspiration that likely contributed to Flounder's years of honorable service to our great nation. Today, this ceremony is an example of something that will hopefully never change. Now, with that being said, finding a good balance between tradition and innovation is okay, and frankly, a necessity as the world continues to grow more complex. We shouldn't do things because we have always done it that way, or to re resist doing something that has never been done before. For example, thankfully, email and internet were not blocked from integrating on our ships and forward deployed units simply because we had always relied on snail mail. To get, today, we can communicate and find almost any information with the power of a smartphone from the palm of our hand. I think about the aircraft on this base, the EA-18G Growler, and PA Poseidon as examples, or the FA-18F Super Hornet Squadron that Flounder commanded. Cutting edge, te te cutting edge technology that represents the very best that our nation can offer. Look at the infrastructure Flounder championed here on base. 5G for better connectivity and improved updated facilities and resources to help ensure the base continues to function well into the century. A combination of business acumen, technology, and operations. 
otherwise known as BTO, are more and more relevant for leaders given the pace at which we move. The priorities of the world have changed, and we need to ensure we consider those changing priorities, making the ability, the ability to know when and how to make trade-offs even more critical. I think about my own business. We are leaning into technology in a space, air cargo, that is generally resistant to change. Air cargo networks have traditionally functioned the same way for decades. However, my team and I have taken a fresh, unbiased, grassroots approach where we have championed machine learning, modeling, and complex algorithms to yield an efficient, agile, resilient operation. We have built a network that is a hybrid point-to-point -point and hub-and-spoke system versus a traditional hub-and-spoke network that is common amongst cargo and airline operations. Our design requires fewer aircraft to fly the same number of packages compared to using an industry standard design, saving costs and resources. And we have leaned into sustainability. We were the launch customer for the first electric main deck loader in the world. It's rewarding when large global airlines reach out for feedback regarding this technology. Who would have thought carriers would ask an e-commerce company for this type of feedback and best practices? We've invested in sustainable aviation fuel. The 70%, 30% blend of traditional aviation fuel with biofuels yields up to 22% reduction in carbon emissions. We have changed our way of thinking and we are always striving to do better as we've built an air network within five short years. Now, with a fleet of over 80 Boeing 767 and 737 aircraft in the US, Europe, and Canada, across over 50 airport locations. In less than one month, we will launch the largest field project in the history of my employer at the Cincinnati Northern Kentucky Airport. We have incorporated robotics, a state-of-the-art de-icing and glycol treatment facility, electric infrastructure, and next week, we will commence the installation of solar panels on top of the nearly one million square foot primary facility. The entire project expands over 600 acres with six buildings. It will be the cornerstone of our air haul network. Safety and technology will be the hallmarks of our operation. Now, the business case and cost to open the doors of this $1.5 billion investment was not approved via a flashy PowerPoint presentation. Whether justifying a $1.5 million investment or a $1.5 billion investment, we use data, math, and very specific detail to justify our business case via written white paper documents. Typically six pages, plus appendices and frequently asked questions to include why we should not move forward with a proposal. It forces objective thought leadership. We never use PowerPoint to present a business case or justify a proposal, ever. This transparent methodology also helps to accelerate decision making, yielding in results in weeks versus months or years. Of course, for those of us with roots in naval aviation, we all know that there's always that one junior officer in every squadron who is a PowerPoint wizard. And that's great to prepare for large force exercises. Slick slides with likely some eye-watering animation. There's a place for it. However, I would challenge that methodology when making strategic business and fiscal decisions at the executive level. Speed matters in business, just as speed often matters in operations. Nodes, which are physical locations like airports and seaports and modes, aircraft, ships, line haul, or rail as examples, power our supply chains. With that in mind, I could not speak today without reference to the COVID-19 pandemic, given the impact it has had on our lives and ways of working. I don't need to explain the situation. Everyone in this audience has lived it. From a business perspective, it was certainly an interesting challenge just over a year ago as lockdowns became real. We had a network of over 500,000 employees to include over 20,000 veterans that we have hired in the past five years to help ensure continuity of operations. PPE, or personal protective equipment, was necessary in this regard to include masks and gloves. We click quickly leveraged our air haul network in the US and Europe to rapidly distribute PPE without having to change our network design. This fast deployment supported strong continuity of operations and helped to ensure we could deliver critical goods to those who needed them most. If we think back to 2018, when Flounder took command of NAS Whidbey Island, COVID-19 was not a part of anybody's vocabulary. 
Fast forward to late 2019 into 2020, and the world changed as we knew it, and an example of when speed was put to the test for Flounder was last year at the start of COVID. He had to quickly establish COVID protocols to keep his people safe while maintaining a high state of readiness and continuity of operations. He had to deal with slow supply chains, impacts on resources, effects of on-base support. Much of the physical world became virtual. Flounder's leadership and ability to navigate through ambiguity was put to the test, and once again, he rose to the challenge and excelled. A high bias for action was necessary to deliver results for Flounder's team, squadrons, and other tenants on the base. Achievement is talent plus preparation. Just as Flounder was faced with challenges, so too will Captain Hanks as he takes command. Some trials will be known, such as ongoing COVID impacts, and other challenges will be unknown, unpredictable situations that can occur without notice. However, the U.S. Navy clearly has trust and confidence that Shanks is ready to lead Team Woodby into the future, regardless of what the future may hold. As I bring my remarks to a close, I would like to thank Flounder again for the opportunity to speak at such a special event today. I will use this occasion to paraphrase the words of our 35th president, John F. Kennedy, delivered at the U.S. Naval Academy, which is where Flounder began, began his naval career. I can imagine no more rewarding a career. And should Captain Matt Arney be asked what he did to make his life worthwhile, I think he can respond with a good deal of pride and satisfaction. I served in the United States Navy. So Captain Arney, it's never goodbye, but until we meet again, congratulations, sir, and in true Navy tradition, fair winds and following seas. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Collins, Commander, Navy Region Northwest, will now recognize Captain Arnie's achievements. Military guests, attention to award. The President of the United States takes pleasure in presenting the Legion of Merit to Captain Matthew L. Arnie for exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service as commanding officer, Naval Air Station Whidbey Island from August 2018 to July 2021. Captain Arnie's skillful leadership and superb engagement with federal, state, and local agencies provided the installation and tenant commands with the best available facilities and training and impacted operational success across Navy Region Northwest. His efforts ensured peak mission readiness of the shore and naval aviation enterprise in support of the fleet, fighter, and family. His team's many accomplishments include the Northwest Training and Testing Electronic Warfare Range and the EA-18G Record of Decision. Under his direct guidance, NAS Whidbey Island developed special use airspace and communication control facilities to transfer responsibility, management, and control of military operating areas from the Federal Aviation Administration to NAS Whidbey Island's Air Traffic Control Center. Captain Arnie's superlative engagement with local stakeholders and thoughtful approach to mitigation protocols throughout the COVID-19 pandemic was a model emulated by regional leaders and ensured the safety of personnel aboard NAS Whidbey Island and in the community. Captain Arnie's superior performance of duties culminated his 30 years of honorable and dedicated military service, reflected great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the present, Y.B. Lindsay, Vice Admiral, United States Navy, Commander, Navy Installations Command. Please be seated. On behalf of the Naval Air Station Whidbey Island Wardroom, Ensign Tanner will present Captain Arnie with a gift.
The gift being presented today is a cut out of Whidbey Island and coins collected from every command here on the installation with comments such as, Flounder was an amazing leader and I'm glad to share my personal coin with him and uh, the time we spent together here will be, re will be remembered. Thanks, Skipper. <laughs> On behalf of the Chief Petty Officer's best, Command Master Chief Gilham will present Captain Arnie with a gift. Captain Arnie will now share his remarks. I thought we got a decent sized house, but uh, got to get more wall space. So, <laughs> is it good? Hey, boys, you guys are doing great. Keep it up. All right. Awesome. Um, it should go on YouTube. I thought TikTok, but okay. You're the pro. Thank you. Thanks for those amazing gifts. They are truly astounding, and I really appreciate the thought and the effort that goes into that. And um, thanks for this. This is, uh, uh, it's not me. We'll get through it together. All right. So, yeah, this is the thousand sailors, chiefs, officers and civilian employees who earn this. They're the ones who, so true story. So last night, or actually this morning, about six in the morning, I woke up and uh, I saw a missed call and I saw a bunch of text traffic. Um, so my wife can uh, attest that I sleep very soundly. Okay, so I slept through OPSO calling at two in, two in the morning asking for permission to launch SAR to go rescue somebody. And I was able to wake up to the whole recap because it all got taken care of because of all the great professionals who do things. So, um, so thanks, you know, whether it's launching aircraft and everybody else, all the stuff that goes on, they're the ones who are this. So with that, I do want to say it feels so good to be up here. I'm going to take these off again and we're going to enjoy this moment together. Hey, Shanks, come on up here for a second. <laughs> oh, we gotta have fun. All right. You're gonna see that one again on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and whatever else, so. Thank you for indulging. All right, I can go on for a very long time talking about the last three years, let alone the 30 plus years since April 20th of, of 1988. And that's when I raised my hand outside DC and requested permission to join the Navy. But there is a reception waiting and we need to keep this thing moving along. I don't even have my watch on because I don't want to know what time it is. Speaking of joining the Navy, they were there when I did it. I'm very grateful that my parents are able to join us this week for the decommissioning week celebrations. It is always great for the boys to get grandparent time and we look forward to more of that over the next month and after. And I really appreciate Oma, my mom, in her help with the boys through the week. It's been extraordinary, so thank you very much. Skip, my only brother and older brother, he was able to come out with his kids, Isaac, Lucy, and Sam. Skip just retired 39 days ago from his 31 years, 35 when including our time at the small vocational college we went to. Isaac just graduated from high school and will go to CU Boulder with the Marine Corps ROTC scholarship, so congratulations. 
Lucy and Sam have great plans of their own when they finish high school, and we enjoy our time with you all, and we look forward to more of that and visiting with Patty as well when we go back east for some vacation. Not to live, just for vacation. Salwa, my mother-in-law. She's been with us for every move and many other moments of need uh, throughout the last about 12 years and including during this tour. We're so very grateful for everything you do and we're happy that you could be here today. Thank you. And finally, for close family, a lot closer together in 2020 than some of us wanted at times, my wife and my boys. My wife, Samar, she's passionate about community, empowerment, and creating inclusiveness. Her efforts, her efforts are inspiring. She works to empower military spouses, not to make everyone the same, but to empower them to be what they want to be, a mom, an entrepreneur, a volunteer, a leader. Some need support and others do not, but her efforts have brought people together to be, to be connected and inclusive, to help those who need it, and to honor military spouses. We make each other better. We challenge each other, support each other, unveil blind spots. She's very good at that. We make each other better professionals, spouses, and parents to these two awesome dudes. Boys, it's been so much fun because of you guys. Not all the time, but a lot of time. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> that is true, that's right. I don't ever want to go back to homeschooling, and you guys don't want to go back to Baba Boot Camp. No. <laughs> that's right. But we still made memories and enjoyed while well, supporting each other and developing. Just read, right, Pappy? <laughs> We've enjoyed youth sports, camping, skiing, fishing, not a lot of catching. And now we have so much more to enjoy as we travel down this road together. So friends have traveled from all over to join, and we are very grateful. Some are joining virtually. Teddy B., I know you're out there. Keep it clean on the comments. Continuing uh, is fellow Knapps and Naval Academy classmates, so continuing with some who are actually here today, Matt Arnold. We started together at Naps in 1988 and have been great friends throughout. Thank you for joining us. Eric Anduze, current CEO of the TR. He returned from deployment recently with our very own VAQ-142 Gray Wolves. I really appreciate that you took the time to step away from your yacht to join us up here in, in the area of your future home. What's that guy all about? He didn't get the memo. All right, we were, I wouldn't have it any other way, it's all good. We were platoon mates in 1988 and lived all four years together as roommates at the Naval Academy. We served together as department heads and got to fly together one night in the Gulf. His kids are well out of the house post-college. Mine are right here. I still love you guys. Thanks for joining us, Pappy. Clay and Lisa Williams, another classmate and friend from flight school and other times throughout. Thank you guys for joining. Interestingly, Clay and Eric and their lovely wives, Lisa and Baby, are devout cowboy fans. Anybody who knows me knows that I am the opposite. The rivalry has not gotten in the way of our friendship and has, in a way, made it stronger. I hope other groups of competing interests can take a lesson from that. Ken and Anne DeHan with their daughter, Gwen. I have always been envious of your travels and adventures and have really enjoyed our times together. Jeff Enns and Jason Ali, also local classmates. Uh, Eric, Jeff, and I were roommates from some time back then, and I am happy, Jeff and Jason, that we're going to be neighbors now. Mike Rubel, great connecting with you and your family these last few years, and we're looking forward to being neighbors. I'm grateful to you for your mentorship, 5G, and communication. Thank you. All of them were classmates. And many of us sailed together those many years ago. Also joining us, we got Bizarro, Dana, and Will. Salsa and Jenny from our 154 times. Thanks for coming to the island to join us. War College classmate, Admiral retired Darren Hansen and his wife, Sonia. A Seattle area native and great American. Extra power, that's right. Well, of luck.
What's that? They're redirecting it down further. Yeah, okay. The other way? Thanks. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Darren's a Seattle native, a uh, great American, as a nuclear chain SWO, and an EOD officer and a firefighter in his day job. More college professor and friend David Katz joined us, another local uh, neighbor now. Darden classmate Kevin Berger. I didn't tell you there's a Delta Air Cargo guy in the room. So we'll see what happens at the uh, reception. He's had a great career working at Delta, and made it, which made it easier to get here, but it's still no small feat from Atlanta. Marcus Collier, I saw you back there. I'm grateful for your counsel these last few years, and I look forward, so to speak, to our continued relationship. Thank you. David Mace, Fisher and Marshall, did you guys make it? Yeah, all right, there they are. Okay, awesome. I know we have enjoyed our times with you and are very grateful you guys could join us today. Thanks. Prabhat, Mona, Michigan, Yash, our new neighbors right next door. Great to have you guys join us from our cul-de-sac in Mill Creek. Lulu Ramos, where are you sitting, Lulu? Right down there. Okay, awesome. Raise it higher. I love you. I cannot say enough. There we go. We even quieted down for this moment. I cannot say enough about the support you, Jose, Dior, and Chloe have provided our family in China Lake and here with me. So Jose and I were in the Diamondbacks together in the 90s. And in fact, he was also in the Diamondbacks with my brother Skip before I came to the squadron. Airman Ramos and Lieutenant J.G. Arney have come a long way, and we have enjoyed a great friendship and multiple commands together. Jose is deployed today, and we look forward to welcoming him and the Scorps back later this year. Also, Lulu uh, and them are neighbors, and so in the pack out of stuff and the rush to turn over the house, I called her late one night. I'm like, can I dump some stuff in your garage? I'm going to pick it up later and get it to Island Thrift, which is a great organization. I still haven't done it, but I swear I will get it done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be that neighbor. A couple other military spouses who have also been ombudsman chairs. Brittany Scudder, who was also recently selected as the Civil Stockdale Ombudsman of the Year for the Reserve. So a round of applause for Brittany. Thank you very much. And Sarah Hogue, awesome, cheerful, wonderful, uh, very giving. She's going to be leaving us for Fallon soon, so that'll be a loss for Team Whitby. Sarah is also one of the many of the staff at NASWI. As I turn to the challenges of the last few years, there is not enough time to appropriately review them, or most importantly, to discuss each of the great people on this team who have persevered throughout. I will miss the people. I will also miss the beauty of this location and the greatness of our community. Over on Seaplane Base, check out the area we call Oak Crest, which is above Building 13. It's a Gary Oak savanna that highlights community partnership and the history and culture of the area with exposure to current operations as aircraft come into the pattern for Runway 32. There are many sites like this on the installation that I have grown to know and appreciate. But more than that, I truly appreciate the people who are specialists and passionate and form the team that makes us the foremost environmental partner and steward. You can hear more about that in recent podcasts if you like, or we can discuss it at the reception. But it's the people who make these things happen. The appreciation for these things and our people has grown throughout my career. This career has, has given me much. War fighting, diplomacy, travel, relationships. It's driven me to always work to be better leading, speaking, in diplomacy, a better father, husband, son, brother, and friend. As we strive to be better leaders, our mission is the light and our people are the motivation. But that's why we are here as leaders, to assist those in need, to reorient, recalibrate, but mostly to show purpose and inspire. There are more people to lead and more challenges ahead. There's still much more work to be done here at Team Whitby. But just as we must decide at the end of the day that it's time to go home, it's time to leave that work to Shanks. As we set sail as a family, 
kind of worked out nicely. As we set sail as a family, we leave behind plenty of work to do in our Navy, our great Navy. It's not perfect, but it's great. Mission ready, eternally struggling to execute the mission prescribed to us. We must continue to evolve how we accomplish our tasks, transforming and innovating. We must continue our effort to bring in approximately 40,000 new sailors every year, applying consistent pressure to educate those who did not grow up understanding how to be respectful, how to make your bed, how to clean your room, how to be part of a diverse and inclusive team of teams working together for a unifying mission. But that is also work that will go on without me. I'm grateful and happy for my time, and I look forward to closing this, and I'll now read my orders. Buper's order 0093, detached from Naval Air Station Whidbey Island, and report to your Admiral in Mill Creek. <laughs> for duties to be assigned. Buper's orders 1997. When directed by reporting senior, detach and report in July 2021 as commanding officer, Naval Air Station, Whidbey Island. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Eric Hanks, Commanding Officer, Naval Air Station, Whidbey Island. Rear Admiral Collins, Naval, uh, Naval Air Station, Whidbey Island staff, tenant and region commanders, community leaders, uh, specifically Congressman Larson, State Senators Mazal, Wagoner, Representative Paul, Mayor Severance Hughes, Gear, County Commissioner Johnson, and all the other elected officials here. Also to the many friends and family that are joining us here on the NASB flight line, as well as online that couldn't make it. Um, it is my great pleasure to be here in Whidbey Island as this historic installation's 41st commanding officer. It is a true honor and privilege to join the Team Whidbey Legacy and the many great commanding officers that came before me, but especially following a truly remarkable leader in Captain Matt Flounder Orney. I'd like to uh, start off by echoing Flounder's earlier appreciation and personally thank a few of the uh, same women and men who expertly organized this beautiful and special event, especially Lute Lieutenant Elise 
honest with Mr. Kale Stewart, uh, who led the entire effort, AT2 Herrera, DAQ 140, for the great rendition of our na national anthem, our honor boatswain from VP1 NC1 Loot, our side boys, the Navy Region Northwest Band, our local Oak Harbor Wildcat Navy JRTC Color Guard, our NASA Galley MWR staffs, the Skookum contractors. This is truly a team would be event representing all the great tenants from, from not only this installation, but our community. It was a great team would be event. Once again, let's give them another round of applause. As is customary for the uh, new guy or gal, uh, I'll keep my remarks very brief, but I do want to provide a few comments on this awesome day. The Navy change of command recognizes the formal change of authority of one commanding officer to the next. And I'll get this out of the way, things aren't changing much around here. This is an awesome place. Over the last year of talking to current and past would-be sailors, leaders from across the Navy, and leaders from this local community, it is crystal clear that NAS Whidbey Island is an extremely special place with great people, great Americans, and a critical mission for our nation. We will continue to provide the highest levels of service to our nation, our local community, and most important service to the fleet, fighters, and families. These three CNIC tenants are very clear priorities. As the only naval aviation installation and training complex in the Pacific Northwest, and one of the most capable and valuable military installations throughout our nation, NASWI provides superior support to the naval aviation community and all organizations utilizing Whidbey Island, as well as the Northwest Training Range Complex. Our tenants operate some of the most capable and newest technologies to deter and respond to aggression throughout the world. NES Whidbey Island will continue to prioritize our mission to provide safe, secure, and most capable facilities and training ranges for these war fighters and their families to live and train. It's, um, it's really humbling to be up here, uh, you know, following Flounder. Um, but after 24 years of service, uh, I must acknowledge a few people who have supported me, propped me up, mentored me, encouraged me. I wouldn't be here today without the support of so many great shipmates uh, that re a few represented here today. People like Commander James Rankin spent four years in the same company at the Naval Academy in 7th Company. Uh, Rooster Harris, uh, Deputy, you were with us there. Um, Commodore John Voorhees. Boo and I flew together for over a year uh, on the same exact J.O. crew, uh, flying missions across the Mediterranean and, and Europe. Um, that was almost two decades ago. Uh, a couple stories. Uh, but then we also served again uh, a couple years later at U.S. AFRICOM, uh, Neighbors. It is great to be back here with you and Mindy, and uh, we can't wait. This is going to be fun. Uh, Deputy uh, Commodore Mike Tiny Martinez, uh, we shared the flight deck of Theodore Roosevelt uh, as shooters, and uh, really look forward to working with you and Aaron again, and uh, it's going to be great. And there's so many other maritime patrol and community uh, shipmates that I was so honored to fly with. Uh, I see Dave Sweet over here. I see Frank Reducci and a few others. Um, it's great to be back here uh, with the maritime patrol community and so many great friends. Flounder, I didn't know you before this, uh, but you have opened up your command with full transparency uh, for the last six months. I'm in all the NASWI team, and the broader team would be. We have an impressive team, and I'm very fortunate to inherit this opportunity to join it. Thank you, and best of luck in your next adventure. Mom and Dad, thank you for traveling to Whidbey for the last couple of weeks uh, to join today's event, and so much, so many other family on that little box over there somewhere. Uh, online. Um, but you established my early foundation for work ethic. 
and still to continue it with fine or fine tune it with sage wisdom and advice, sometimes unsolicited, but always needed. Uh, thank you, and I love you, Lindsay and Hunter. Uh, not by your choice, but thank you for lending your father to our nation and enduring unthinkable challenges in this Navy journey, which has encompassed your entire childhood. I can never repay the debt of sacrifice. It's always great to see your smile each day. I love you both. Renee, you're the love of my life, my high school sweetheart, my best friend. You are the foundation of our family. I, I mean, we couldn't have done this Navy journey without your love, strength, and support. You, like so many military spouses, sacrificed so much for our nation. Thank you for your service and love. Love you. Well, those that choose to listen to me over the next couple of years, uh, so it's time to get a step aside and get out of the way. But uh, Admiral NAS Whidbey Island will continue as the premier naval ins aviation installation. We will continue to support our fleet, fighters, and families, and be the best stewards within our local communities. Thank you all for being here today. I look forward to meeting and working with you over the next several years. Now, as I step aside, we'll prepare to honor the tremendous 33-year career of Flounder. May God bless Naval Air Station Whidbey Island. God bless our U.S. Navy and our deployed sailors. And may God bless the United States of America. Fly Navy. XO, all orders and policies remain in effect. Take charge and carry out the plan of the day. All right, sir. Side boys, host. Please rise for the benediction by Chaplain Uvilla and remain standing for the departure of the official party. Family and friends, right? <laughs> Good stuff. I quote Eugene Peterson out of the message, The Fruit of the Spirit. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like an affection for others, an exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Let us pray. God, thank you for your kind intentions on our lives, our families, our careers. Lord, in the ceremony to follow, we are saying goodbye to Skipper Arnie, Samar, and their sons. We seek the richest of blessings upon them, as they change careers and locations. Further, we have also said a corporate hello and welcome to our new commanding officer, Captain Hanks, his wife, Renee, and their son, Hunter, and daughter, Lindsay. We place each of them into your kind arms as Captain Hanks takes command. Further, Lord, may you impart to our new CO your wisdom, your discernment, your courage, and grace as he leads. As I close, I pray for a special blessing upon all the sailors here at NASWI who work tirelessly in support of and defense of our country. As we leave this place, may we always remember how much you are for all of us, each of us as individuals. In thy heavenly Father's name, amen.
Navy Region Northwest departing. Naval Air Station, Whitby Island, departing. Side voice dismissed. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the change of command ceremony. Please remain at your seats, but you may take this opportunity to stretch your legs while we reset the stage for Captain Arnie's retirement ceremony, which will begin momentarily. I swear the encore will be brief, but if you do need to make a head call or whatever, please feel free. All right, enjoy yourself. Hey boys, you're doing great. Come on up here on the stage. You're gonna join us up here. Yeah, come on, buddy. No? Okay, so there's a seat up here if you want it. Ladies and gentlemen, please retake your seats.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to host this ceremony that recognizes Captain Matthew L. Arney as he retires from the United States Navy following 30 years of dedicated and faithful service. Today we will bid farewell to him with the wish that he and Samar and their family enjoy every success in the future. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Skipper Arney for his contributions to the, to the United States Navy, to NAS with the Island, and to the commands and sailors he has served over the past three decades. He is the type of leader that each of us should inspire to become, and his efforts to create a forward-looking and transformational approach aboard this installation have made NAS with the Island a better command. He has ensured that the sailors and personnel who make up Team Whitby have a strong foundation to meet the challenges of today and tomorrow as we support operational tasking to achieve our national security strategy. The ceremony we are conducting today is one of our oldest traditions. It is a celebration of Captain Arnie's service to his country, his shipmates, and his family. We are proud to share this tradition with you and are pleased that you are here today to participate in this special occasion with him. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Matt Arney. Thank you. So yes, I'm up here again. Last time, I'll be brief because I already said my remarks. Uh, Austin, you're welcome to join us anytime, buddy. Okay, you're good. All right. Um, great. So, um, also, so this is Naval Ceremonies, Customs, and Traditions. As we were getting ready for this and trying to put together what does a change of command and retirement look like, I figured why not go to this? This is the 1980 edition. I've had it ever since I joined the Navy. And I was like, I've never looked up the retirement section. Well, I looked it up, and it is... Appendix K, though it's not even in the actual text, it's an appendix, and it's some kind of paragraph that doesn't really mean anything. I'm like, okay, thanks for the help. Peace out. <laughs> so we're winging this. We're just making this happen. I love it. And uh, please feel free. There's still food and restrooms and all that good stuff. Um, so here I am again. Had a great time last night celebrating the change of command and this retirement with all of our uh, department heads at NASWI. And the reason I say that is somebody left their sunglasses. I think it was on Sean Merrill's table. So if you want them, come get them. Okay. So I've said much already. So allow me just to, do you want to do certificates first or guest speaker? What were you doing? Yeah, let's do certificates now. Okay, we're going to do certificates, then we'll get to Ben. All right, Captain Arnie would like to take this opportunity to present his family members with certificates of appreciation. Certificate of appreciation from the United States Navy, presented to Samar, Aiden, and Austin. To all who shall see these presents, greetings. After completing 30 years of active naval service, your husband and father has ended an honorable and faithful service to his country, and his efforts are sincerely appreciated. Such a rich and rewarding career reflects a strong commitment to the principles of freedom and democ democracy and the belief that they must be upheld at any cost. That type of total commitment is not possible without the full support of his family. Although you may have never had to carry out a military order or deploy into hostile waters, your loyalty and steadfast support of your sailor's career can rightly be viewed as service to your country. That loyalty and dedication were significant courses of strength and for your husband and father during arduous duty and exemplified the highest traditions of patriotism. On behalf of the Department of the Navy and the officers and crew of Naval Air Station Whidbey Island, I extend to you a sincere thanks and express our appreciation for a job well done. Given this ninth day of July, 2021, signed by Rear Admiral Collins, Navy Region Northwest.
In recognition of his service, Captain Arney received certificates of appreciation from each president that he served under. These include Presidents Clinton, George W. Bush, Obama, Trump, and Biden. He also received a letter from Governor Abbott of Texas. I will read one of these letters received. To all who these presents shall come, greetings. Know ye that this certificate recognizes the retirement of Captain Matthew L. Arney. It has often been said that the actions of the brave allow us to live free in this great land that we call home. Our armed forces have long borne the standard of our great nation in defending our most cherished rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Whether within our borders or in the most dangerous of foreign lands, these courageous men and women have sacrificed much so that we may live in freedom. It is ever more evident in this changing world that liberty does not come without cost. Forevermore, you will be owed a tremendous debt of gratitude for helping to ensure that America remains a beacon of hope and freedom unto all nations. We salute you for your service to the United States of America. Great. All right, we got that down. Thank you very much. And so now I'd like to introduce our retirement guest speaker. So um, a lot of this, by the way, there's some ceremony that's going to come, the folding of the flag and stuff. And I, my guidance was, I don't want this to feel like a funeral, OK? I'm not dying. I'm just moving on to something else. And so hopefully we can keep this lively while we still honor the tradition. Uh, but one of the things I was encouraged to do is bring somebody who knows you from your throughout your career. And so I reached out to Ben Renda, and Ben Zingo, Renda, and I we go way back. Ben came from uh, to us today from Virginia, where he resides with his wonderful family. Ben and I go back to our days in the as JOs in the Diamondbacks, but also as a crew pair flying in country together in what was then Operation Southern Watch in Iraq, and we, we actually employed our first weapon in combat together in uh, Basra on an artillery piece. We also did the forward air control airborne syllabus paired up together. We've been through a lot back then. We deployed on GW and Kennedy, and we also made that early transition from first cruise JO to seasoned, at least we thought we were, second cruise junior officers. I look back on those days and nights finally with great memories and also on those times when we have reunited in England, in New England, Italy, California, and other places through the years. He's also one of my many mentors in leadership, organizational culture, and transformation. I appreciate all he's done in his career and his passion for service throughout his time on active duty and in the reserves, most notably at the Defense Innovation Unit. Please welcome Ben Zingo Renda. Two things struck me as I uh, prepared for this. One is uh, I've been hanging out in Silicon Valley with Silicon Valley nerds, and I say that affectionately because I'm one of them, for 15 years. This is the first time I've worn a tie since I got married, so apologies if it looks a little funny. And secondly, uh, I echo Sarah in that uh, the last time I was on a proper Navy base with rhinos was Matt's change of command for VFA 154, the Black Knights in the moor. Uh, the sound of freedom, the smell of that JP-8, well, that, that's good stuff, and as a former LSO, it warms my heart. Um, my pilot eyes aren't as good as they used to be, so bear with me. Okay, um, Matt, thank you for the kind introduction. Um, thankfully, Sarah has made a wide range of prescient remarks that helped us remember many of the milestone professional achievements of Matt's career, and I choose that form of address carefully because for what's to follow, Captain Arnie is a bit too formal maybe, Flounder maybe too casual, but uh, Samar, forgive me if I'm breaching some protocol, um, but I'm out now, so I don't know if the Navy can touch me anymore. I, I don't think so. Maybe I get off the base. A quick programming note, though. Um, I may or may not say some things shortly that may be a bit controversial, so I'd like to apologize in advance. Um, and if you make it over to the Oak Club, I'll make it up to you at the bar. Um, but these are my personal comments and, and observations and reflections, neither reviewed nor endorsed by anybody other than yours truly. So. 
For that, thank you, Matt, for allowing me to be a part of the ceremony in your transition. When I look out across the audience today, I see three groups of folks, active duty, uh, base leadership, and the military folks here, friends, family, and, and loved ones, and the unfortunate sailors who drew the duty straw to have to do yet another base event on a Friday. So sorry, guys uh, and girls. Someday you'll be up here uh, wearing uh, honored stars, etc. cetera. Um, I was lucky to meet Flounder when we were crewed together, as he mentioned, in the world famous VF-102 Diamondbacks back then. And we did all of our fact A and, and all the things there. I think some people say the first is the worst in the Navy, whether it's training or careers. I actually disagree. I think uh, my tour as a J.O. can be the most formative, and it was for me. It's a time when you actually have the lowest expectations levied against you, but you get to do the real job for the first time, and often with as equal an operational impact as the more senior and more savvy officers. This is my first time ever stepping foot on this beautiful base, and I know Matt as commanding officer has always been a strong advocate and steward of this fine base. However, many of you may not know that his love of naval air station beautification runs deep and actually started decades ago. On a quiet, dark, moonless night back in the 102 days, Matt wrangled a few of our other squadron mates and decided to scale the NAS Oceana water tower to proactively update the official paint scheme to, of course, add our squadron colors. Now, the plan was brilliantly executed right up until the guards passing by about three in the morning, noticed the flashlights up on the water tower top. And if you've never seen the Diamondback insignia, trust me, he was caught literally red-handed. As punishment, the base CO, and it's really ironic that you've just completely, uh, you've successfully completed your tour as a base CO now, reprimanded our entire squadron and tasked us with an entire day of repainting the curbs on the base. So thank you for that, Matt. Now, it probably doesn't sound like much fun, you know, painting curves on a hot, humid Virginia Beach uh, summer day, but it actually was really fun. And why? Because our team ethos was, ethos was so strong, and we all know that strong teams perform unusually well, both in the private and in the public domains, just as one or two did, uh, I think, when we were a part of it. Another strong example of Matt's inspirational leadership occurred when the first single-seat Hornet squadron showed up at NAS Oceano. The bright-eyed and bushy-tailed single-seaters, my words, started putting their stuff in the yoke club, but there was one table, just that one table that just crossed the line and went too far. Fortunately, we were about ready to go to Air Wing Fallon out in Nevada for an Air Wing detachment, so Matt, a few of us, and oh, I think it was a white pickup truck, took that table and it made its way into the maintenance semi-tractor trailer and was delivered to, uh, to Fallon to be attended to. Now, it was a brilliant plan, leveraged the target range cameras to put, uh, to put the table in the middle of a target and then obliterate it on a camera with a, with a GPU. Somehow, word got back to Oceana and then all the way up to the flags. And uh, Matt, to your credit, you rectified very creatively that situation and got the table back to the Oceana Oak Club. However, karma can be a serious force. And uh, Matt's intent was borne out shortly by our sister Tomcat squadron. And the table somehow found its, side, uh, its way over the side of an aircraft carrier. But that's, that's a story for another day. But Matt, you know, excellent leadership if I've ever seen it. You stood up for the right thing, even if, even if it was well outside of any SOP, TTP, TACMAN, NATOP, SORM, or another rule or regulation. Now, I share these two things with you, um, but the underlying point is leaders often have to take a stand and evaluate and make decisions in tremendous ambiguity. And Matt, you've done that at every step in your career. On a more serious note, I do want to take this opportunity to make a plea uh, to everyone in the audience today. Now, this is the last group to which I normally would want to preach the value of good teamwork, but having spent over a decade working with both Silicon Valley leadership and DOD leadership, trying to bridge the unfortunate chasm of misunderstanding at times, sometimes a mutual lack of situational awareness and respect, and sometimes misaligned incentives, I am a bit concerned about our prospects, not only as a Navy, but a military, and most importantly, as a country. So I ask you for your help. Whether you come from the military side or the civilian side or somewhere in between, please do whatever you can in your own unique way to help replenish our lines of communication in our communities. Our country is changing, our communities are changing, our expectations are changing, our worlds are changing, our technologies are changing. 
and the threats that our company, that our country are, are facing have been changing as well. And while I've worked at a technology company you know, for the past 14 years, some of our current versions of technology, for example, social media, haven't always been helpful. Just as the Navy learned the hard way not to be over-reliant on new air-to-air -air missile technology exclusively over the skies of Vietnam, today, too, we need to be thoughtful about how we use new technologies that can have a spectrum of impact, everything from artificial intelligence to social media platforms. We need to be balanced, critical, and holistic when considering if, when, or how to deploy a given technology. So whether you personally throw your political rudder to the hard left, to the hard right, or somewhere, somewhere in between, everyone can help by engaging in building or even rebuilding bridges so that we can collectively remember that there's more common ground between us than differences that divide us. If you're in uniform, I challenge you to respectfully but consistently challenge the status quo when it doesn't make sense. To remember that the top cover you provide as a leader might be the only safe place where innovation and significant improvement can thrive to benefit our sailors. And to fight, and to fight for changing leadership incentives if needed, if they ever veer from risk avoidance and get them into an intelligent risk-taking mentality. Now, not so much in the air where naval aviation lives, because those risks are fairly well defined, but especially in places where they can be more subtle, but no less of a potential issue. And if you're a civilian and you're here or listening to this, well, congratulations. You're already a bit of a unicorn because so few, few folks in our country, unfortunately, have ever crossed paths with somebody in uniform or heard any stories about the sacrifices our military make routinely without any protest and with full devotion. So I would humbly ask you to please share your, your stories very actively with others, especially those folks who don't have any real connection with the military. That can be one of the fastest ways to break down the human biases at play in our world today. So finally, and back to the happiest topic, Matt, I deeply respect your service, you and your family's proud naval heritage, and your sustained and focused contribution to our national defense over the past 30 years. But I'll even humbly challenge you as well. After you hang up your flight suit for the last time, I challenge you to create innovation and build the bridges just as you've done over your entire naval career. Lord knows we need more good teamwork now. Robert Greenleaf coined the term servant leader in a 1970 essay, and I'll just pull his definition directly. Quote, a servant leader focuses on the growth and the well-being of people and the communities in which they belong. If that isn't Samer and Matt, I don't know who meets that definition. I think they certainly do. So Captain Arnie, congratulations on a great career of naval service and a great first chapter. I wish you the best of luck for continued success in the next. So fair winds and following seas. And for everyone else who's here and listening, thank you for everything you do to help our country stay safe every day in these unprecedented times. Thank you very much. When you retire, you should get a, a trailer to camp in. <laughs> there we go. All right. Out of the mouth of babes. That's great. Hey, Ben, thank you very much. I really appreciate those words and the sentiment in the stories, but thank you very much. That's exactly what I was looking for. Sarah, thank you as well. I really appreciate both of you guys being here and your messages. Thanks. Uh, so we have one last short speaker uh, that's, uh, I want to give the podium to Samar for a minute to share some remarks. So please welcome my lovely bride, Samar. Thank you. you more than anything in this world. I do. I said this before to Matt. 
I say it again today, on this very special day in our journey together. Life with Matt Arney have been full of adventures, surprises, learning experiences, but it was not all easy. In 2008, General David Petraeus looked at me and said, after pinning Matt to commander in Abu Dhabi, he said, Samar, military life is tough. And the military spouse journey is hard. It's a hard journey, but it is rewarding at the end. At the time, I didn't fully understand his message, but I decided to take the journey. In 2015, Senator John McCain pinned Matt to a captain in his office at the Senate. He shook my hand tightly and said, you are the backbone and not just a support to our service members and national security. Yes, the military life is hard and military spouses are indeed the backbone for their service members and national security. But this journey would not have succeeded or become possible without my unconditional love to this man. I believe in him, his vision, and his love to this nation. I believe in his leadership, in the way he touches the heart and mind of his team, and in the way he respects, validates, and appreciates everyone around him. I believe in him as the best dad ever, and my best mentor and friends. The more I get to know my husband and feel more layers, the more I experience the qualities of the man I dreamed to be with since I was a child. Matt Arney, I do love you more than anything and I'm ready for our next journey together. All right, sir, so we pulled a few things out of that little paragraph in Appendix K, and we're going to get back to those right now. Chief Yateman? Chief Yateman will now present a retirement shadow box. The tradition of presenting a shadow box to a retiring sailor is born of early British custom. In the old days of sail, it was considered bad luck for a sailor upon final departure from a ship to allow his shadow to hit the pier before he himself departed the ship. In order to ensure no such misfortune befell their shipmate, the crew would construct a box of the finest timber and place within it all the things that reflected his accomplishments. Only then could the sailor, with the shadow of himself in hand, safely depart the ship and go ashore once and for all. If we, if we get a strong back, can we carry that up there so everybody can see it?
For Captain Arnie, we chose a non-traditional shadow box. What you see before you is a 20 millimeter gun barrel from an FA-18 Super Hornet. It was made available through one of his sailors who served with him in the Black Knights. It is hung on a backdrop of live edge walnut to represent his time before and after the Navy. On the finished wood face are the logos of each command he served in from the Naval Academy to NAS Woodby Island. And below his name and service dates is something that many of us have heard Captain Arnie say. His sage advice to serve proudly, choose to be happy, and follow your core values. Post the flag detail. So just uh, to note here, so first of all, Pettifser Angevine is affectionately known as Coach D, one of the boys. First football coaches. And I love the military working dogs amongst many of our team members, so thank you for doing that. So Freddie was proud to carry the flag in for Skipper Arnie today. the flag of the United States of America. My name is Old Glory. I was born on July 4th, 1776. My birth certificate is the Declaration of Independence. I fly atop the world's tallest buildings. I stand watch in America's halls of justice. I fly majestically over great institutions of learning. I stand guard with the greatest military power in the world. Look up and see me. I stand for peace, honor, truth, and justice. I stand for freedom. I am confident. I am arrogant. I am proud. When I am flown with my fellow banners, my head is held a little higher. My colors are a little truer. I bow to no one. I am recognized all over the world. I am worshiped. I am saluted. I am respected. I am revered. I am loved and I am feared. For more than 200 years, I have fought in every battle of every war. Gettysburg, Shiloh, Appomattox, San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, the Argonne Forest, Anzio, Rome, the beaches of Normandy, the jungles of Guam, Okinawa, Tarawa, Korea, Vietnam, and in the heat of the Persian Gulf, and a score of other places long forgotten by most, but well remembered by those who were there with me. I was there. I led my sailors and Marines. I followed them. I watched over them. I felt their love on me. I was on a small hill on Iwo Jima. I was at the ruins of the Pentagon and the World Trade Center. I was dirty, battle-torn, and tired, but my sailors and Marines cheered me, and I was proud. I had been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of countries that I have helped to set free. It does not hurt, for I am invincible. I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of my own country. And when it is done by those with whom I have served in battle, it hurts. 
but I shall overcome, for I am strong. I have slipped the surely bonds of earth, and from my vantage point on the moon, I stand watch over the new frontiers of space. I have borne silent witness to all of America's finest hours. When I fly a half mast to honor my sailors and my Marines, and when I rest in the trembling arms of a grieving mother at the graveside of her fallen son or daughter, I am proud. But my finest hour comes when I am torn into strips to be used as bandages for my wounded comrades on the field of battle. My name is Old Glory. Long may I wave, dear God, long may I wave. The flag which we honor and under which we serve is the emblem of our unity, our power, our purpose as a nation. It is no other character than that which we give it from generation to generation. The choices are ours. It floats in majestic silence above the hosts that execute those choices, whether in peace or war. And yet, though silent, it speaks to us of the past of men and women who went before us and of the records they wrote upon it. The flag used in this ceremony today flew with Captain Arney during combat missions in Afghanistan and Iraq and was flown in Captain Arney's honor over the USS Enterprise on his last day as conning officer and over NAS Whidbey Island during his tour here. Captain Arney has lived under the flag's folds day and night during his career. It is a visible national symbol of the country he has served with honor and will always remind him of the precious freedom he has defended so well. Captain Arney, please take center stage. Bell ringer to your post. For 30 years, this sailor has stood the watch. While some of us were in our bunks at night, this sailor stood the watch. While some of us were in school learning our trade, this shipmate stood the watch. Yes, even before some of us were born into this world, this shipmate stood the watch. In those years when the storm clouds of war were seen brewing on the horizon of history, this shipmate stood the watch. Many times he would cast an eye ashore and see his family standing there, needing his guidance and help, needing that hand to hold during those hard times but he still stood the watch. He stood the watch for 30 years. He stood the watch so that we, our families, and our fellow, fellow countrymen could sleep soundly in the safety each and every night, knowing that a sailor stood the watch. Today, we are here to say shipmate the watch stands relieved, relieved by those you have trained, guided, and led. Captain Arnie, you stand relieved. We have the watch.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as Captain Arnie and his family are piped over the side. Bosun, stand by to pipe the side. Our shipmate is going ashore. Captain Arnie will now report to Admiral Collins and request permission to go ashore for the last time. Captain, United States Navy, retired, departing. The Captain's Army family, please join him. Navy family departing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Captain Arnie and Captain Hanks would like to thank you for your attendance and invite you to join them at the Oak Club for a reception. If you did not view the static display aircraft and other vehicles prior to the ceremony, please take this opportunity to walk around them as people depart, depart the flight line. In addition, there are guest books here at the front. They will also be at the uh, reception. Please sign them for Captain Arnie and Captain Hanks. Naval Air Station Whidbey Island, dismissed. <laughs>